Yo, listen up, Slim Shady's in the house, but this ain't no regular rap battle, see? We're diving deep into the Cannibals universe where even the fluffiest creatures got beef. Diss tracks, man. They're like a double-edged claw, ripping through the charts and leaving scars deeper than a tiger's scratch. From sugary sweet pop stars to metalheads with more piercings than a pincushion, everybody's got something to say. Reputations on the line, feelings hurt, friendships tested. It's a jungle out there, and these cannibals ain't afraid to roar. We're talking about the songs that made the whole world stop and stare. The ones that had everyone whispering in the hallways. The ones that made you want to crank up the volume and scream along, even if you knew you shouldn't be taking sides. So buckle up, kids, because we're about to take a wild ride through the most brutal, hilarious, and downright savage diss tracks the Cannibals universe has ever witnessed. Let's do this. The Smiling Critters, man. They were like the poster children for wholesome entertainment. You know, those wide-eyed, perpetually cheerful creatures crooning about friendship and sunshine. Yeah, well, turns out even those goody-goodies had a dark side. Mrs. Slifer's detention dropped like a bomb on the Cannimals music scene. A bubblegum pop beat with lyrics sharper than a wolf's teeth. They went full-on savage, dissing their strict teacher, Mrs. Slifer. The song was a smash hit, topping the charts and turning the critters into overnight sensations. But it also sparked a firestorm of controversy. Parents were outraged, teachers felt disrespected, and the Cannibal School Board threatened to ban the song altogether. The smiling critters learned the hard way. Sometimes, even the cutest creatures can pack a mean bite. And in the Cannibal's universe, nobody escapes a diss track unscathed. Now, everybody knows family can be complicated, right? But the Afton family, those guys took dysfunctional to a whole new level. We're talking haunted pizzerias, vengeful spirits, and enough baggage to fill a graveyard. So when their track Father Dearest dropped, the Cannibals universe braced itself for impact. This wasn't just some petty squabble. It was a raw, emotional gut punch that aired out all their dirty laundry. The lyrics cut deep, exposing the family's darkest secrets and unleashing a tidal wave of pain and resentment. It was uncomfortable, it was heartbreaking, and it had everyone talking. The public was torn. Some praised the Aftons for their honesty, while others criticized them for exploiting their personal tragedies. But one thing was for sure. Father Dearest was a chilling reminder that sometimes the most brutal battles are fought within the confines of our own homes. Yo, picture this. A virtual idol, all cute and programmed, right? Then bam, Hatsune Miku drops synthetic savagery, spitting fire at the industry that birthed her. Turns out, even a digital diva can have a bone to pick. The song was a middle finger to the suit. A big screw you to the ones who thought they could control her sound. The verses were packed with venom, each rhyme a calculated jab at the phonies and the fakes in the music biz. Miku's fans, they ate it up. They loved seeing the digital queen roar, showing the world that even a synthesized voice could shake the system. But the industry, man, they weren't laughing. Critics called it a publicity stunt, a cheap way to grab headlines. Some even called it digital suicide, claiming she'd alienated her corporate sponsors. But Miku didn't give a damn. She'd exposed the ugly underbelly of the industry, and the fans were on her side. Synthetic savagery wasn't just a diss track. It was a digital revolution. It proved that even in a world of ones and zeros, authenticity could still cut through the noise. This ain't just one artist, this is a whole crew. The Vocaloid scene, man, it's like a digital symphony. Voices from all over, all different styles coming together. But behind the melodies, there was this prejudice. This idea that they weren't real artists. Just some software spitting out tunes. Programmed prejudice was their answer. A giant middle finger to the haters. It was a collaborative effort. A chorus of voices rising up against the narrow-mindedness of the industry. From Miku to Luca, Rin to Len, they all joined forces, spitting rhymes hotter than a motherboard on fire. The message was clear. We're here, we're digital, and we ain't going nowhere. The song became an anthem for the entire Vocaloid community. A battle cry against the critics who dismissed them as nothing but synthesized sound. The corporate bigwigs, the ones who thought they could control the digital world.
Now this ain't your typical diss track, this is personal man. This is cleaning out my closet where I aired out all the dirty laundry, all the pain and anger I'd been carrying around. My mom, my relationships, the critics, I held nothing back. The verses, they were like therapy sessions, raw and uncut. I poured my heart out on the track, each rhyme a weight lifted off my chest. The world got a glimpse into the real Slim Shady, the hurt behind the rage. It was my truth, laid bare for everyone to hear. The reaction, explosive. People were shocked, they were moved, some even felt uncomfortable. But it was my story to tell, and I wasn't going to sugarcoat it. The song sparked a national conversation, forcing everyone to confront the messy complexities of family and fame. Cleaning out my closet wasn't about winning a rap battle, it was about catharsis, about confronting my demons head on. It was a message to anyone who'd ever been through some messed up shit. You're not alone. It was my truth and it resonated with millions. Yo, picture this. The virtual arena's heated. KDA's dropping a diss track, yeah, they ain't retreated. See in the world of esports, rivalries run deep. Trash talk's a weapon, makes your blood creep. KDA, they ain't here to play nice. Queen bees sting, man. It cuts like a precise miracle scalpel. Dissect their competition, leaving them speechless, stuck in digital rendition. This ain't no arcade game, now this is the big leagues, where every key so clean, every lost key. But KDA, they thrive on the question. Queen bees sting, stung in the at this They pour an ounce of beans with the galaxy and the Those who claim victory but crumble like babies. The lyrics in the car, like a combo right time, leaving their opponents in most of the time. Fans are going wild, the cats are exploding, memes are spreading, the tensions are rising. The esports team is shaking, the meta's disrupted. KDA's ran, ain't nobody's trapped. They ain't just hurt. They are forced to meet you, in these things, a lyrical fight. As the raw emotion, the competitive fire, the hunger to conquer, to rise higher and higher. Hey, listen up, cause this ain't your typical diss track, BTS. They take in a different tack. Macni mutiny, a playful jab fest between the members, putting each other to the test. See, in the world of K-pop, image is everything. But BTS, they ain't afraid to let loose, to sing about the little things, the inside jokes, the pranks they pull, the way each member evokes laughter and joy from their devoted fan base. Mac Man Mutiny, a playful chase. The youngest they rising up, mocking the older with lyrics so clever they could have been a lawyer. But it's all in good fun, a bond unbreakable. The chemistry between them, truly unshakable. Fans eating it up, the internet's ablaze with memes and reactions, a digital day. Mac Man Mutiny, it ain't about hate. It's about celebrating before it's too late. The unique dynamic, the brotherly love that shines through their music, a gift from above. So while other diss tracks aim to destroy BTS, they choose to employ humor and wit to uplift and delight, proving that even in music there's room for a fight that's playful and fun, shining ever so bright. Yeah, that's BTS for ya, always subverting the criteria. Yo, check it, gorillas. The virtual band with a real life drama out of hand. 2D's grievances, a glimpse inside. The turmoil and chaos they try to hide. 2D, the front man, the melancholic soul, finally snapping, taking his toll. On Noodle, Russell, even Murdoch, too. Airing out the dirty laundry for me and you. The lyrics cut deep like shards of glass, revealing the cracks in their cartoon facade. Years of pent up frustration, bottled up tight, now spilling out in the dead of night. Fans are stunned. The internet's abuzz with theories and rumors. What caused the fuss? Is it real beef or a publicity stunt? 2D's grievances, a painful confront. The band's dynamic, forever changed. The fragile balance rearranged. But amidst the chaos, the music shines through. A testament to their talent, it's true. 2D's grievances, a cry for help. A desperate plea to escape this mental shell. And while the future of gorillas remains unknown, one thing's for sure. They'll never disown the raw emotion, the pain, the strife that bleeds through their music, their virtual life.
Yo, picture this. A bunch of squeaky voice rodents dropping disses. That's the chipmunks, man. They went from singing Christmas carols to spitting fire. Guess even rodents got beef in the cannibals universe. Squeaky Snipes was their weapon of choice. A trap game that, well, pretty much everyone they ever can to save them. Think Mickey Mouse on Dewey and this the whole Disney crew. It was a chaotic symphony of high-pitched insults and chipmunks to the cause. The industry was shook, given the choke on their tea pots, and lawyers lined up like hungry cats and fish Some big players weren't too happy about it. But all the good publicity, right? Squeaky Snipes shot up the charts faster than a squirrel on the tree. It just goes to show, even in the animal universe, sometimes you gotta squeak up to get hurt. Yo, remember the Hex Girls? Those eco goth chicks from Scooby Doo? Turns out, under those black lipstick smiles, they were packing more than just instruments. They dropped Garish Grouch, a diss track so venomous it would make a cobra blush. See, some washed up music critic, probably stuck in the disco era, decided to diss their whole eco goth aesthetic. Called them Garish, said their music was noise pollution. Big mistake, man. the hex girls don't play that. Garish Grouch hit the airwaves like a sonic earthquake. They ripped into this dude's outdated fashion sense, his questionable taste in music, even his receding hairline. It was brutal, man. The dude's career went from lukewarm to ice cold faster than you could see Hex. The moral of the story? Don't mess with the Hex girls, especially when it comes to their music. They'll shut you down faster than a haunted house on Halloween night. We're talking girl group drama, cannibal style. Josie and the Pussycats, those feline femme fatales, stirred up a whole lot of trouble with catty catastrophe. Turns out, even in a world of singing animals, there's still rivalry, backstabbing, and enough hairspray to deplete the ozone layer. They aim their claws at another girl group, some bubblegum pop princesses who shall remain nameless. Let's just say their wardrobe involved a lot of pink. The lyrics were pure venom man, accusations of lip syncing, stolen dance moves, even sabotage at a charity concert. The fallout was nuclear. Fans chose sides, radio stations exploded, and the gossip columns had a field day. It was a full-blown catfight, complete with hissed insults, scratched records, and enough drama to make a reality TV producer drool. The worst part? This wasn't some publicity stunt. This was personal. These girls were actually enemies now. The music industry, man, it's a jungle out there. And in this jungle, only the fiercest felines survive. Can't touch this track, yo. Yo, picture this. Disney princess turned pop nightmare, Hannah Montana, dropped a track so sugary it would give you cavities. But then, bam, some clever cats flipped the script and hit back with Diver Delirium. This ain't no fairy tale, dog. This diss track was straight up brutal, man. They exposed all the ridiculousness of her double life, the cheesy lyrics, the whole shebang. It was like watching a wrecking ball smash through a cotton candy castle. And the best part, homegirl couldn't even retaliate. I mean, what was she gonna say? Oh yeah, well, you're just jealous of my platinum records and sold out tours, please. The silence was deafening. Diver Delirium proved that even behind the glitz and glam, nobody's safe from a lyrical beatdown. Ground control to major disc. Yo, listen up, space cadets and star children. Even the legendary Ziggy Stardust, the androgynous alien rocker himself, wasn't immune to a little lyrical sparring. Some say he got too big for his britches, too caught up in the cosmic drama. Then came Space Oddity Snob, a scathing critique disguised as a catchy tune. They called him out for being pretentious, out of touch, a little too lost in space if you know what I mean. It was a sonic meteor shower aimed straight at his glitter-covered ego. Now Ziggy, being the rock star he was, tried to shut it down, you know, silence the critics, pull the plug on the whole thing. Censorship? Not in my galaxy, bro. The more he resisted, the louder the song got. It just goes to show, even when you're orbiting Earth in a spaceship, you can't escape the gravitational pull of a well-crafted diss track. Peace out. Hey, hey, we're here to play and diss. All right, so everybody remembers the Monkees, right? The lovable, goofy band of brothers churning out bubblegum pop hits. But behind the scenes, things weren't always so peachy keen, Jellybean. See, these dudes were put together by a label, 
manufactured for mass consumption. So when Manufactured Mayhem dropped, folks were like, hold up, these pretty boys got some bite. The track was a self-aware jab at their own image, acknowledging the corporate strings while simultaneously saying, screw you to the suits. The irony, the label hated it. I mean, they were spitting on the very hand that fed them, right? But the fans, they ate it up. It gave the monkeys a whole new edge, a kind of punk rock credibility they never had before. It just goes to show even in a world of manufactured pop, a little rebellion can go a long way. Yo, picture this. Five girls preaching girl power, right? Platforms and peace signs, all that sugary sweet stuff. But behind those smiles, there was a storm brewing, a recipe for disaster. Word on the street is, one Spice Girl, let's just say she had a little too much spice in her life, decided to air out some dirty laundry. Basic bitter, they called it. Aimed straight at another pop princess, someone who dared to outshine the whole damn group. This ain't no playful jab, nah. This was a full-on lyrical assassination attempt. Career on the line, maybe. Reputation in the gutter, definitely. This ain't no playground spat, this is the big leagues. And when you're playing dirty, there ain't no referees to blow the whistle. This poor girl, she never stood a chance. The Spice Girls, they had the world in their hands, singing along to every word. They could have told her to jump off a bridge and those fans would have asked, how high? Brutal, man, just brutal. S3, wannabe dissing. B. Wannabe. Aight, so picture this. America's sweetheart belting out high notes and rocking that ponytail like a weapon. Innocent as pie, right? Wrong. Turns out this pop princess had a dark side, a rebellious streak that would make even Slim Shady blush. It all went down at a donut shop. Yeah, you heard that right. A freaking donut shop. Security cameras caught the whole thing. Ariana whispering I hate America while licking a donut she didn't even buy. Talk about disrespecting the pastries, man. The internet exploded faster than Mentos in a Coke bottle. Fans were outraged, critics were sharpening their knives. And the donut industry? Well, let's just say their sales went through the roof. But here's the thing. See, Ariana, she ain't no stranger to controversy. She owned up to her mistake, apologized for the donut debacle, and her fans, they forgave her, just like that. Guess sometimes all you need is a catchy song and a killer voice to get away with anything. S3, licking the competition. J-pop, death metal, and diss tracks? Now this is where things get interesting, man. We're talking baby metal. Those Japanese girls mixing J-pop sweetness with freaking death metal screams. Talk about a culture clash, right? Some people loved it, some people hated it, but nobody could ignore them. One day, these metalheads, they decided they'd had enough of the haters. They dropped Metal Madness, a track so brutal, so savage, it would make Cannibal Corpse crap their leather pants. Every lyric was a middle finger to the critics, every guitar riff a punch in the gut. They called out the elitists, the purists, the ones who said metal was dead. They even took a swing at the industry, the suits who thought they could control everything. The response? Let's just say it was explosive. Metalheads were divided, some applauded their guts, others called it blasphemy. But one thing's for sure, baby metal didn't give a damn. They were here to stay, and they were going to do it their way, even if it meant pissing off the whole damn world. Yo, picture this. Two French dudes in robot helmets, dropping beats that could melt your speakers. That's Daft Punk, right? They were untouchable, kings of the electro scene. But even robots ain't safe in the cannibals' universe. See these dudes? They like to keep it mysterious, hide in the faces, never speak in an interview. Some cats thought it was cool, others, they thought it was a load of bull. One day, out of nowhere, this track dropped. Robotic Rumble is a straight up diss on his other DJ. Some big shots on thought Daft Punk's whole act was a gift. Now these robots, they ain't known for dissing. They let the music do the talking, but this time, they went full lyrical war. The verses were slick, rhymes tighter than the helmets. Calling out the DJ for his ego, his played out beat, even his whack hair. The diss track blew up the panel. Everyone was screaming, from the lion to the lady. That DJ, the one they did, he tried to play it cool, said it was all in good fun, but word on the street was he was fuming, tried to get the track pulled off the airway, said it was slander, but nobody was buying it. Dad, punk, they 
just kept doing their thing, helmets on, dropping bombs on the dance floor. See, that's the thing about robotic rumble. It proved even robots got cool. It showed the world that behind those moments, people he wouldn't back down from a fight, even if it meant breaking their silence. The cannibal universe ain't never been the same since. Yo, picture this, 2001, these pussycats think they run the scene, right? Dropped a track, all bubblegum and glitter, talking about fame and fortune. But behind those smiles, pure venom, man. Backstage banter, they called it, but it was a straight-up diss aimed at, well, everyone. From what I heard, they went after the whole manufactured pop scene, called out the labels, the producers, even took shots at their own fan base. Talk about biting the hand that feeds. Word on the street is it was aimed at Britney, Christina, the whole nine yards. Now these girls, they had a point. The industry's a freaking meat grinder, chews you up and spits you out. But damn, they didn't hold back. The backlash? Brutal. Critics ripped them apart, fans felt betrayed. Even their label tried to bury the track. See, here's the thing about truth. Sometimes it hurts, and in this biz, honesty can cost you. Josie and the Pussycats learned that the hard way. They wanted to expose the ugliness, but the industry ain't ready for that kind of mirror. S3. Meow Mix Massacre. Now Jem and the Holograms, they were different. They were all about that positive message, right? Love, unity, all that good stuff. But even these girls had a breaking point. Enter Showbiz Smackdown, their own glittery middle finger to the industry. See, word on the street was some exec tried to mold them, turn them into something they weren't. Big mistake, buddy. Gem and the holograms, they weren't about to be puppets. They fired back with this track, raw, angry, exposed the whole damn game. Lyrics were fierce, man. Talking about fake smiles, backstabbing managers, the whole shebang. They even called out their label by name. Now that takes guts, especially for a group known for their wholesome image. The suits, they freaked. Tried to pull the plug, silenced the track, but it was too late. The fans, they connected with the message, the anger, the frustration. Showbiz Smackdown proved even the good girls can bite back. S3, Glitter and Guts. So there you have it, man. The Cannibals Universe, a whirlwind of beats, rhymes, and straight-up lyrical warfare. From playful jabs to full-blown feuds, these artists proved that music is power and sometimes you gotta fight fire with fire. <laughs>